happen to go into uh, edit preferences add-ons and let's go ahead and hit add uh, add curve extra objects all right so that would just give us more options when we're using the curve menu okay so this video is actually a suggestion from uh, a viewer of this channel so big shout out to poppy i can't pronounce the name i don't want to pronounce it wrongly but i'm just going to call you poppy so big shout out to poppy and she asked if uh, i can make a video on how to make a curly hair in blender without particles and that is a challenge i have had before and i've tried that many times uh but I came up unsuccessful a lot of the time, so I just actually gave in to using particles. But as she mentioned it, and I, have, I haven't done uh, Blender videos in a couple of weeks, I felt guilty, so I decided to go ahead and give it a try. And in today's video, I'm showing you some experimentations I did and how I was able to get to a reasonable result. Now, just a disclaimer, this method sh would not actually be very... Uh, controlled so you can actually really you can't really control it easily and that's why it didn't favor me but if you're just doing a steel shot or a steel render i think it should work fine and if you're doing an animation it will have some difficulties but i think it should work as well but if you know how to do it and if you do actually use this do well to hit me up and tell me and show me the results i would like to see what you come up with but for this video, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of my approach and you can go ahead and overcomplicate it, if you will, and just go crazy with whatever you can. But I feel like I've talked too much. Let's get into the meat and grit of the video. Now let's go ahead and hit Shift A. Now let's go ahead and hit Shift A. Uh, we'll go into the curve menu and it's, you can see we have extra objects and we're going to select uh, the curve spiral i will choose the spheric 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 i'm not sure how to pronounce and we can just play around with the settings to see what we like and see what we can get okay so the steps i think you should just play with the sliders and actually see the results because trying to explain it would I don't want to say be a waste of time, but trying to explain it will be uh, irrelevant at this point. So just the steps increase sort of the resolution and the turns increase the amount of curl it will have. So actually think of this as hair particles or as hair chunks uh, now so that you won't have difficulties in the future. Think of it as the hair chunk uh, just in its simplest form because that's what it actually is. So just think of that while trying to get this shape, but just, just experiment with it first before you actually do it on your character. And I just changed the output curve type to Bezier and changed to Auto, okay? So we have a clean curve going around. I think that's basically it. It looks just about right. and we can go ahead and continue with what we have i'm going to add some extra curves just try to just follow along and it will make sense later path i'm going to add a path first and then a circle i just scaled it down and applied the scale I'll just move that out and that will make sense if you don't know what that does that will make sense in a little bit and I'm going to add a circle next I'm just going to tap into edit mode and scale the circle down now I'm going to select that main curve uh, actual actual hair and hide everything else you don't actually have to hide everything else for this to work I just wanted to see clearly and we'll go to the curve options and you can change the resolution if you will but i'm going to leave this as the default for now we can go down to geometry and taper object will select the path and bevel object will select the circle okay moving forward i will actually uh undo some of what we did now but just to go ahead and watch with me and we'll see what we can get 
Now, the rotation of this uh, path from top view actually affects the taper of the entire hair strand. Okay, so you see me playing with this, rotating it a certain way will get a different type of taper profile. And this will actually affect the size of the strand. So scaling this up and scaling this down, this is just a uh, basic uh, using curves as hair uh, method. And I just went ahead to edit uh, the curve a bit. Do well to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll just uh, do a quick time lapse of me editing the curve. I didn't actually want to show this process, but uh, well, you can actually watch it so you see how to get some decent results. But you can do whatever you will. I'm just changing the handle type to free and just go a little crazy, but not too crazy, but go a little crazy on this just so you have uh, some variation. Now this, I actually uh, played with the curve so that we have something that looks uh, not too straight, but you know, random enough. Now you can change the scale and just try to fit that on your character. And I just scaled this down and I'm now fitting it to my character. Like I said, it's not really controlled, so I actually had to duplicate it and move it around. So that was uh, actually what I didn't want to do because I didn't want that amount of stress. You see, I can actually control everything completely. I have to actually deform the curve. So if you know a way I can control this entire curve uh, with maybe some hooks at the end or something, do have to leave that in the description, in the comment section. And let me know. I would actually like to know. But this is just a quick and easy, dirty method to do this. Now, as you can see, I'm actually trying to uh, I'm actually trying to increase the size of one particular strand without increasing the size of another. And I had the problem of I didn't actually notice that the uh, shrink or fatten was not actually working because of my taper object I had, I think. So I play a lot with that. <laughs> I struggle a lot with that. And I just stopped the recording at some point and experiment some more. Then you actually have to delete the taper object and go into edit mode and just manually shrink that down. So you see, this actually comes with a lot of difficulties, but it's a quick and dirty method, in my opinion. I wouldn't actually use this for anything that you want to animate. Maybe just a still render, just to cover the hair. But if you know another method, please do well to, sh to share and help others and help me as well. But that is basically it for the video. I think that is the majority of it. That's just to add a curvy uh, hair strand, curly hair strand. So I hope you found this video informative somehow. I'm really sorry if you didn't. But do well to hit that subscribe button to show your love. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I never take your time for granted. I haven't done many Blender videos recently. And I will come back. I'm not leaving the community anytime soon. So that is basically it. Thank you guys for watching. Sweet, sweet papi chulo.